How is knowledge about equilibrium put to practical use? Let's look at the harbour process, which is the industrial process to manufacture ammonia from nitrogen and hydrogen gases. And this process is very important because ammonia is used to make fertilizers, explosives, and as a cooling agent. Here we have an investigation where the focus question is, how does pressure affect ammonia yield and time taken to reach equilibrium? So we have have an independent variable pressure and we have two dependent variables and they are ammonia yield and time taken to reach equilibrium. So in the investigation we alter the independent variable between the treatments, we alter the pressure between the treatments and we see what effect does that have on yield and on the time taken to reach equilibrium. And what is it that you notice? We see that as we increase the pressure that improves improves the yield, but it doesn't really for this particular temperature affect the time taken to reach equilibrium. Uh, the temperature, by the way, is being held constant. It's a controlled variable and it's being held constant at 500 degrees Celsius. Now, why is it that as we increase pressure, that increases yield? This makes sense in terms of Le Chatelier's principle. Le Chatelier's principle says that if a system is in equilibrium and we disturb that, then the system will respond to that disturbance in such a way as to counteract the effect of the disturbance. What is the effect that we are bringing about here? We are causing there to be a higher pressure, therefore more crowdedness. Now, if we look at the coefficients in front of each of the chemicals in the balanced equation, we notice that there are more molecules referred to for on the left-hand side, the reactor side than on the product side too. That means that the forward reaction squashes four molecules into two. It halves the number of molecules. Of course, it doesn't have to be four to two. It can be anything within that ratio. It halves the number of molecules and therefore halves the crowding effect. Whereas the reverse reaction, it doubles the crowding effect by doubling the number of molecules. And so if we're going to increase pressure, we're going to increase crowdedness then which of these forward or reverse reactions is going to be favored during the intermediate stress period? Well, clearly the one which undoes that crowding effect. So in other words, the forward reaction would be favored. And that's good for us because that makes there to be a greater yield of ammonia, which is what, of course, the harbor process is trying to do. Now, in this investigation, we are asking the question, how does temperature affect ammonia? ammonia yield and time taken to reach equilibrium. So again, we have one independent variable, temperature, and we have two dependent variables, ammonia yield and time taken to reach equilibrium. So we alter temperature, the independent variable, and we measure the two dependent variables and see what trend we can find. And what we see is that as the temperature increases, the yield of ammonia decreases although the time taken to reach equilibrium gets shorter as the temperature is hotter. How can we make sense of this in terms of Le Chatelier's principle and other things we've learned? Here we have the information that the forward reaction is exothermic. We see that by delta H being negative. That means the forward reaction releases heat. That means that the reverse reaction must be endothermic. It must absorb just as much heat as the forward reaction releases. Now what we are doing is we are increasing temperature, we're increasing the amount of heat around and so the system will react to try to undo what we've done, in other words to absorb that heat. So which reaction will be favored? Well the one that absorbs it, in other words the reverse reaction will be favored during the disturbed period and of course that uses up ammonia which is not what we want because we want a lot of ammonia and that's why the yield is not high when the temperature is high. But a good thing about heating the system up is that that increases the rate of both forward and reverse reaction, just makes the particles move faster. And so we reach equilibrium sooner and time is money. So that's something we want. So on one hand, we want the low temperature for the high yield. On the other hand, we want a high temperature for the time to reach equilibrium to be short. And so what on earth do we do? Remember, the temperature doesn't only 
have the effect of shifting the equilibrium one way or the other to counteract the effect of the stress we bring, but it also alters the Kc value. And here we can see data for that. When the temperature is higher, Kc value is lower, significantly lower. Here we have data for the yields. These are the yields for various temperatures and pressures. And we can see that as we increase the pressure, that improves the yield, but as we increase the temperature, that worsens the yield. But because it decreases the time taken to reach equilibrium, actually we have to reach some kind of compromise. And so what they decide to do, they find is optimum, is they use a fairly high temperature. And then they also use an iron oxide catalyst, which also helps, of course, to decrease the time taken to reach equilibrium.